3D platformers are a great genre. Not only are they fun to play and look at, but they're not overdone in the indie market like 2D platformers are. From all the way back to Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie, I've always been a fan of 3D platformers, or as fandom games would like to call them, character platformers. Speaking of fandom games, I mentioned this in a community post, but let's take a moment to send our wishes to the families of Brad Venable, the famed voice actor for Honest Game Trailers who recently passed away. So today we're going to talk about a 3D platformer that a lot of Nintendo fans compared directly with Super Mario Odyssey. Here is my review of A Hat in Time for the Nintendo Switch. This game's story is set around a little alien girl known only as Hat Kid. As she casually flies home on her spaceship, the mafia from a nearby planet breaks open one of the windows, causing all of the time pieces the ship uses as fuel to fly out to the planet below. The now stranded Hat Kid then travels to that planet to fight off the Mafia and regain all of those time pieces. The really great thing about this story is its colorful cast of characters. There's a ton of funny cartoon humor, and everything is wacky and funny from cutscenes to descriptions of objects on the spaceship. When it comes to gameplay, this is a 3D action platformer with lots of puzzle elements. First and foremost, the Nintendo Switch version doesn't really have DLC built in. You've got the base game and little areas for the DLC campaigns on the main menu, but you still have to go to the eShop and buy them for $5 a piece. Once we really start diving in, we've got the classic 3D platformer setup. Your spaceship is a hub with a bunch of locked doors behind timepiece numbers, the timepieces being your main collectible like Power Stars are to Mario 64 and puzzle pieces are to Banjo-Kazooie. Each of these locked rooms has a telescope that goes to one of the game's worlds or chapters. This is where things get a little different as A Hat in Time isn't really that sandboxy. You go into a stage to get a single timepiece for the mission and go back to the hub to unlock the next mission. While all missions per chapter do take place in the same world, a lot of things about that world are different and catered directly to that mission. Case in point, you cannot go into mission 1 and get the timepiece from mission 3. It's designed so certain areas are inaccessible and you can only get the timepiece for the mission you are currently doing. Only a single of the game's chapters and areas has a sandbox mode where you can do it like other platformers. But that is not to say it's entirely linear. You're going to unlock new chapters before you finish the earlier ones, and you'll actually have to do multiple worlds at the same time. Many early story missions require key items that are not obtained until you get to those later chapters. Now as far as the sandboxy exploration side goes, you do have a good incentive to go backtracking. Playing the earlier stages when you have a lot of late game powers will give you access to a lot of collectibles, but more so towards unlocking bonus stages or gathering materials for new equipment. Now the great thing about the chapters and areas you go to in the game is their cute and varied charm. Every world has characters that feel very different. You go from a huge mob of Mafia members who are all just named Mafia, to becoming a star in movies while two anthropomorphic movie directors are arguing about winning the next Bird Movie Award. It's all very colorful and cute in its variety, and that variety goes into gameplay as well. The first world you go to focuses more on simple exploration and combat, while the second focuses a lot more on stealth. There was definitely a lot of thought for giving every world its own identity. Now the most unique thing about this game is your task in collecting yarn to make new hats. You swap out headwear for equipment, and each of them have different abilities used for solving puzzles. Some hats throw explosive potions to fight off enemies a little easier than your umbrella can, while others activate hidden platforms and can launch you around the stage for easy access to certain areas. There's also an ability system where a certain shopkeeper appears in pretty much every stage of the game if you can find him. He takes collectible currency for badges, which give you a variety of different abilities like attracting collectibles to you or giving you a long-range beam attack. 
Now, when all of this comes together, despite only having about 40 to 50 collectibles to get across the game, it has a decent amount of content and length. If you just want to do the bare minimum and get to the ending, you could probably beat the game in about 8 to 9 hours, while doing everything leans more towards the 10 to 15 hour range. Next, let's get into presentation. Visually, the game looks really adorable and cute, though it has some jaggies in docked mode and handheld mode has a pretty noticeable blur. Audio-wise, it is worth noting that the game has really uplifting, charming music. It's just as good of a listen as it is with gameplay. Now, as far as performance is concerned, it is definitely serviceable. Some areas do have drops, but it's not really a slowdown sort of frame drop. It's more a matter of the game freezing for a second or two and then continuing like normal. That's all I have to say about that, so now let's go into battery life. On the original model, A Hat in Time has a battery range of 2 hours and 30 minutes up to 3 hours and 55 minutes. On the Nintendo Switch Lite, it has a range of 2 hours and 36 minutes up to 4 hours and 10 minutes. And on the Red Boxer V2 2019 model, it has a range of 4 hours and 18 minutes up to 6 hours and 50 minutes. In conclusion, A Hat in Time is an adorable and charming collectathon with a colorful cast of characters and fun platforming. Now on the downside, it does have some visual and performance mishaps to slightly lower down the experience, but if you're looking for a character platformer to give you a lot of laughs, look no further. Reviews to go rate A Hat in Time for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.